N3. The only difference here is we're still doing two-step equations, but this time they're going to involve division instead of multiplication. So lots of similarities here, but it's going to look different. Originally, this was set up to use algebra tiles like the textbook uses, but I think we're having more success and latching onto the, the balance thing, balance blocks balloons. For this equation right here to try and model this, we're not going to model it with algebra tiles. If you're trying to model this um, using, I'm going to just put balance blocks balloons. The hard thing here for this is you have to start writing a half of a block or even half of a balloon, which is kind of hard to think about in reality. But we'll try and draw one model for this. This thing says x divided by 2. If, if the equation said 2x plus 3 equals 7, 2x plus 3 equals 7 would, would be a balance this way. You'd have, well, let's make it a bigger balance here. Uh, if, you were, if you had a balance that uh, had this on the si two sides of it here, whoops. We need that and a little triangle here. Okay, so there's the balance. If you if you had uh, this on it, well, there's here. This is going to be my uh, two x's. If it was this, if it said two x plus three, like in the last section, it'd be two x and then a three here, right? Two x plus three. Two x plus three would be two x's and a block that's three. And then you have 7 over here, right? Make it bigger. 7. If you were going to solve that, you'd represent this as 2x's, right? The problem is now it's not 2x's. It says x divided by 2 plus 3 equals 7. How is that going to be different? How can you represent, how can you represent x divided by 2 instead of x times 2? x times 2, you have two blocks there. x divided by 2 will be the only way you could represent it. Absolutely. I would I would say probably the best way is to only have to make this so that it has uh, kind of half of one of these boxes here. So we'll make uh, we we'll kind of shrink this down, and maybe we can s somehow show that half of it's there. You have half an x, right? You have half an x here, and you have three, and that equals seven, right? If you were trying to model it, that would be the only way you could do this. If you were trying to solve this thing then, do you do anything differently than before just because this says x divided by 2? Some people panic and start saying, oh, that divided by 2, I've got to get rid of that right away. In the last, you know, in the last section when it was multiplication, you got rid of this extra number first. It's the same thing here. What would be the first thing that I'm going to do to get rid of things to start to isolate x. In the end, I want it to be x all by itself. What's the first thing I do? What's the first thing you do? Take away the three. Yeah, get rid of this 3. You could just take away 3 from both sides, but the way we model it is by actually tying one of these balloons on negative 3, right? Because that's like taking away the 3. Because this, what is this way together? That way is zero, right? So it's the same as though it's not even there, right? If you, I'm going to cheat and just do copy and paste, right? Because I can up here. If you're, if you're having your second sequence here, then this is all you have. This is, this is totally gone here, right? And what would you be left with on the other side here? Instead of the negative three and the seven, what could you do instead? You could do a four, right? Let's go back to this. And uh, instead of this, you're going to shrink it down a bit and make this into a 4. I messed up my thing. But that's a 4 now, right? We got a half an x is 4. What would be our final step then? What would be our final step? If half an x is 4, what's the entire x? What is it? What is it? What's the final step? Let me redraw it here. Can you say that again? 
X and then 8, right? We got this here. This whole X is now 8, right? <coughs> the sequence is going to be the same, but the last step here, going from here to here, what was the step that we did to both sides here? From this balance to this balance, what did we do? When it was divided by 2, what did you do to both sides? Multiply. You multiply by 2, right? If you, have a, if you have an equation that involves division, you multiply both sides as the last step. When we had one that involved multiplication, you divided both sides, okay? We are going to, uh, I'm thinking that we can probably skip some of the writing a concrete model for these, okay? Especially this one. This one's tough to do with a concrete model. I'm going to make you the offer that you can leave that one. I would like you to draw later on, at some point, draw one model, a sequence of diagrams using balances for that one. But the rest of them in here you can solve using inverse operations, okay? Inverse operations. I want to do one of these things for you here. Okay, one more of these things for you to try and solve this. Um, we're going to do these two questions together to show you know the first one using inverse operations, and then you can do the second example. If you haven't written this down, for both of those equations there, it involves division. At some point you realize you're going to need to do multiplication. But just like before, I put a line down here. If you haven't done these, please copy them down. If you have done them, kind of compare your work. Keep the two sides separate. Get rid of the extra thing here first, plus 4. To get rid of that plus 4, take away 4. So you do something to both sides, get a result. What's left on this side? You got x plus 3, x divided by 3 plus 4 minus 4. You're just left with x divided by 3. And on the other side, you're going to have negative 5. People mix this one up sometimes because they say, divided by 3, well, I just divide this by 3. You don't just divide that by 3. If this is divided by 3, how do I cancel out that divided by 3? You multiply it. It's, it's harder to show this because people think, well, I should just write times, whoops, times 3 down here. This is probably not the best way to show multiplying by 3. Probably the best way is to just put brackets around it and put a 3 there. Okay, or you could even put words underneath, multiply both sides by 3. It's up to you. You can write it in words if you don't want to write it like this. You're left with just x. That cancels out. And you're left with minus 15. Incidentally, you can check your answer here. If you, if you haven't figured out how to check your answer yet, how can you check your answer here? Once you get a number... How could you check if it's right or not? Remember, we're, we're trying to figure out what x is. Once you get a number that you think x is, you can just go back and test it, right? What could you do? Yeah, just put it, put it in there for x, right? So you could write out the equation exactly as is, except for instead of that x, you could replace the x with with minus 15, right? And you could just work it out. Just so I want you to make sure you can realize this. And then you just work out that one side and see, right? You say fifth, negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. And then negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. If you get down to the bottom and it says negative 1 equals negative 1, what does that mean about the answer you found? It's right, right? That it's right, that you got the right answer. You can. It's called substitution, check by substitution. What does substitution mean or substitute? If you're playing soccer and you call to the ref subs, you switch something. You're replacing one player with another. Right here you're replacing the X with negative 15. Okay, let's quickly do the second one here. This one has, I guess, a couple differences. What's one difference? On side. It's on a different side. This stuff's on the left. I don't. I want you to get comfortable with either side, whichever side the x is on. It doesn't matter. Make this so we can see it a bit bigger. Um, if you're trying to solve that thing again, 
whatever side the variable's on, get rid of the extra part first. Is probably a good uh, a good way of doing this. If you get rid of that seven, what do you end up with here? How do you get rid of that seven? Take away seven, both sides. What do you have after you do that? You have just negative five on this side. What do you have on this side? Just that thing, right? Minus m divided by five. I want you to realize that when you have an m and when you have a negative in front of a fraction, it could actually it could actually go on the bottom, or it could go on the top, or it can go in the middle. It doesn't matter where it is. What you might realize at this point is you might say negative this fraction equals negative five. So somebody might just be clever and say if negative that fraction equals negative five. I could right away change it to positive this fraction equals positive 5 if you want. You could do that, right? You could say if negative equals negative, then positive equals positive. That would be one way of doing it. Okay. Or somebody else says their next step might be to say, I'd rather just write this negative because it can go on the top or the bottom or in the middle. Instead, just write it like that, because then if you want, what you can do is you can say, if the negative's on the bottom there like that, I can just solve this by saying, if this is m divided by negative 5, what do I do to both sides? Multiply both sides by negative 5, right? Whatever you do, don't lose track of that negative. If you times both sides by negative 5 here, okay, that's probably how you're going to write it. This cancels out and you just get m on this side and you get positive 25 on the other side, right? Whichever way you do it, there's lots of different ways to do these. That's one way, okay? Can you get going on finishing this section? There's, there's the second example here to do if you have not already done so. There's a second show you know thing, two questions, and then there's the then there's the assignment here. All right. Some of you I know are up to working on 10.4. If you're doing that, make sure you realize that there's a couple different ways to do uh, each of these equations here when you do the second example. Have a look at the textbook and make sure you can do both of those ways. Okay. But I think for today, let's make sure we get to the end of 10.3. I think it's possible. I think there's no reason you can't get to the end of 10.3 today. Okay? Certainly the examples and everything, and if not all of that, a good chunk of that. Okay? If there's some questions at the beginning that say model using algebra tells, I don't think they are. I can't remember. 4A and 5A are. We can leave those out, or you can use a balloon block balance model.